Noxzema, Acne 12, Acne Medicine. 12 ways to fight acne with one single drop. Acne 12, nothing works faster to clear up your pimples. Unclogged pores to clear acne. Kills bacteria on the surface and in pores. Dries up acne pimples. Allows skin to heal. Reduces blackheads. Dries up excess oil. Gives you better skin. Penetrates pores quickly to help clear up acne below the skin surface. Helps prevent new pimples from forming. Fights acne with benzoyl peroxide. There's nothing more effective. With benzoyl peroxide, it's clinically proven. Welcome, dear listener, to our podcast, Jeff and Rick Present, Unpacking the Power of Power Pack. Where we journey through each issue of the most underrated Marvel series of the 80s while drinking beer. Analyzing awesome and amazing adolescent adventures and absorbing alcohol. I am Jeff. And I am Rick. What do we want? Banter! How do we want it? Random! Random banter, buddy. How you been? What's new with you? I am just fine. <laughs> you can try and just let, you can keep on trying to hold that laugh in or you can just let it go. I just, I love the fact that you pulled the pom poms out of nowhere and we're just cheering your heart's content. I, uh, I get enthusiastic about stuff. You're a man of hidden talents and hidden pom poms. That's what I was going to say. Hidden pom poms. That, that was, like, that was, uh, uh, did I steal your joke? No, but I think that's great. And I'm trying to think of something funny to say where it's like, that was my college name. And I'm like, that's dumb. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Hidden Pom Poms was not my nickname for anything there. I hate to tell you this, but it is now your nickname forevermore. Uh, Jeff Hidden Pom Poms Dodd. <laughs> you build 10,000 bridges. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and on that segue, <laughs> I had a fun time this last Saturday. I got to sit down with two cool dudes via the internet, mm -hmm. I got to record something with Marvel Secret Wars 2 and Beyond podcast. Ooh, very cool. Yes, We're... they invited me on as an expert. On? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just stuff. I don't know. No, they, uh, they, they said that they wanted an expert of Power Pack to come on. And they got and, you? And they got me because you weren't available. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if they, if they asked for me, I'd be like, me, an expert? I make a cranky man voice. <laughs> I make drink, feed me beer, and then I make a joke. Me, an expert, I bring beer so a guy can talk to me in a creaky voice. <laughs> no, it was it, these guys were awesome. They were fantastic, and it was uh, Sean and Greg, and they've got an amazing show where they do deep dives into Secret Wars, and they follow through uh, Secret Wars two right now, and they follow through with different parts of the Marvel universe that Secret Wars crosses over with, mm -hmm. and they do a deep dive into a specific issue or character. So what they decided to do is they decided to really do a deep dive into what Power Pack was doing and how Power Pack got affected by the Beyonder. And they wanted me to come in and uh, talk about the issues of Power Pack that crossed over. It was an absolute honor. I really appreciate those guys. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of fun, and I can't wait for the episode to come out. It's probably going to come out sometime in September. They, they've got a bit of a backlog of where they're at right now. But yeah, when it comes out, we will make sure to let everybody know so you can queue up your podcast to catch that. What about you? Tell me about your randomness of your banterness. Well, uh, for my random banter, I discovered that if you're going to have a garage sale and it's reported that there's going to be a heat wave and it's going to be like 100 degrees, just don't have the garage sale. Nobody's going to come out because it's like, oh, so that's 100 degrees out. It's a skillet and they aren't interested and going and walking around tables filled with my junk. So you're going to spend seven hours outside just kind of going, well, that's today. <laughs> so I discovered that. The good thing about the garage sale was that uh, while we are hanging out and I got my little kid next to me sitting on the floor, she stands up and takes her first steps. Huzzah! Huzzah! So that was a proud daddy moment as I'm staring and going, she took a step! She took another step and another! And then she sat down and then that was it. No, it was very cool. I was glad to come over to your uh, garage sale, and I was yeah. glad that my wife and daughter bought something, just know. so that, you know, there was commerce so going there, on. There was an actual sale that and, happened. And, and we were able to also see this wonderful feat of your daughter taking a step, and yeah. it was very so special. It was, it was pretty cool. I was very excited about that. So, And then, the very next weekend, we had uh, my daughter's one-year birthday. So we had a huzzah! bunch of... Yeah, huzzah! <laughs> Another proud daddy moment as she uh, existed with time. Uh, it was nice. Yeah, so I uh, had a bunch of friends come over, and we had cakes, and shade and chairs and it was just yeah it was it was fun it was really great yes it was a very good party yeah 
I'm saying you guys an awful lot these days. Yeah, they really are. It, it, which is a good thing. Yeah, which is a good it, thing. It's all not good a, things. Not a bad thing. It's a. I want to say it's not even really intentional. It's just kind of like, hey, we're just doing stuff. Every time you mention a great event, I happen to be there, which yeah. is all kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm kind of happy about this. I know. I think the only one that you weren't there for was uh, when I went over to Sun River. Yeah, and I kind of wished I was there. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was okay. It was pretty great. It was yeah. a fun trip. I think that it's time to actually get past this malarkey mm -hmm. and get onto some cool stuff like a Power Pack comic. Okay. Jeff, tell us about the last episode in two sentences. Power Pack goes on an amazing undersea adventure where they see fish, rescue dolphins, fight sharks, get scared by an octopus, and capture the alien Xanthian boulder crusher Snake Eyes by trapping him in an old sunken passenger ship that they then transport to the Arctic, freezing him into hibernation. We also learn that guest star Marina is depressed, doesn't value her own life, and would really greatly benefit from some counseling. And as a quick aside on that, we made jokes quite a little bit about uh, how you know Marina was very depressed, and I kind of made fun of her about that, and because it was very much just kind of this character trait, and it, so I made fun of that. Uh, depression is not a laughing matter or something that you should make jokes of. It is actually a very serious condition that people suffer from. And if uh, you're suffering from depression or having bad thoughts or anything, seeking someone to talk to or counseling really, really is a, a beneficial way to, to get through your, you know, to get through that kind of problem or to at least help you with that problem. Well said. And, and you're right. Even though we did make fun and make light of, of Marina and her conversation that Alex had with her, at least Alex was there to talk to her. He's yeah. not a professional, but he was a friend and he was a friend that was listening to her and talking to her. Sometimes this is easy as talking to your friend sometimes you do need to go and see a counselor but, never be afraid of either of those options yeah it, you would be surprised that people are willing, willing to listen to you and you know they may not be the the best support network but oftentimes they'll give you an ear to to kind of bend for a while and that that can actually help out too well said jeff now that we've dealt with serious part of the two sentence replay uh how would you like to give me a beer and tell me what our power pack pick is my pleasure my friend i'm excited to see what this one's about because I I got to tell you, I had a hard time looking yeah. for this one. I had, you would think that it would be easy with the content that we're going to provide, but I just couldn't find anything to really match up. I had to go back to the store the second time. And thanks to the good people at John's Marketplace in Tigard, Oregon. Okay, before I see it, I'm just want to get little spoilers. It's a sewer episode because they're in the sewers. We talked about this before, though. I'm kind of curious what sewer related <sighs> beer you're going to get. I got to tell you, if I could have found one, it would have been nice. Yeah, but like sludge let's, stout. <laughs> but let's see if you can figure this one out. I'd like to present you with Shingu beer from Brazil. Hey, I understand why it's got an alligator on it. That's cool. <laughs> Smooth as silk. And, yes. And uh, does it have any story time? No, it does not. I, I will, bottled I, in Brazil. Bottled Done. in Brazil. That's I it. can read this, or I can go ahead and let you read this because I know you like story time. So I'll let you. No, read you, my, I'll let you read my notes. No, there. no, you go, you you do the notes. I always do uh, the story time on the bottle. Well, so okay, I, the I, I, got, I got it for you here. You can go ahead and tell me what the uh, ABV of this beer is, and I will tell you a little story. This is Shingu beer. It's spelled X-I-N-G-U, Brazil's premium export and best-known international beer. It's named after the Xingu River, a tributary of the Great Amazon River. So there's a little bit of story. Alan Ehrens, a writer who specialized in beer history and anthropology, and his wife owned a traditional hotel in the mountains of Vermont in the United States. And they had just been in an expedition into the Amazon rainforest, having come to Brazil in an adventurous trip in search of a lost beer. The trip had been motivated by an article Alan had written about the origins of beer in the world. In his research, he found written records dating from 1557 about a black beer produced in the Amazon rainforest with corn, manioc, and fermented naturally. Interesting. I'm curious to see what it tastes like. Very nice. <laughs> that's what it sounds like when you open it. And what would what, you see as the ABV on this puppy? Uh, 4.6 alcohol by volume. <clears throat> kind of a lager. Yeah, it kind of tastes like a lager. It's, it has... a, dark, it's a dark lager. Yeah. But it's tasty. I, I, It's got a honey sweet taste to it. Yeah, kind of on the on the back end, it's got that, that mm -hmm. honey flavor. And uh, on the front end, it's a lager. Yeah, hmm. and it's very smooth, and it's very it's very light. And on a day that is sort of pushing around 100 degrees here in Portland, Oregon, this is quite a nice beer, I gotta say. Yeah, it's it, okay. Here's what's throwing me is that it's a black beer, so it is you know dark as a stout. Yeah, and I can't see light through it at all. But then I, it does not taste like a stout at all. No, it's quite. Light, refreshing, a little sweet. And now that we have our beers in hand, let's go ahead and get the book in front of us. Jeff, tell us about this issue. Power Pack, issue number 11, June 1985. Problems, credits, written by Louise Simonson, penciled by June Brigman, inked by Bob Wycheck, colored by Christy Scheel, lettered by Joe Rosen, edited by Carl Potts, editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. Featuring Alex Power, a.k.a. G, oldest kid and kind of the leader. He is the master 
of gravity, Julie Power, aka Lightspeed, next oldest child and kind of the mother hen of the group. She is the master of flying and leaving a rainbow trail that lasts 4 minutes 15 seconds. Jack Power, aka Mass Master, third in line of succession, kind of the family grouch, can be dense and can control his density. He's voiced by Jeff. Katie Power, aka The Energizer, the baby in the family, kind of the cute one, disintegrates stuff and then fires power balls, voiced by my daughter. A happy Alex is a floating Alex, and the happiest Alex is a G-dropping Alex. Wow, we got to that shtick fast. The buoyant boy is using a can of Lem for play, no copyright infringement here, to dust the house, having fun but not actually accomplishing much. Proclaiming himself done, he declares that he is going up to the roof to practice with his new jetpack. His brother is complaining, surprise, because at least Alex can use his powers to help him do chores, unlike Jack. As a show-don't-tell example, Jack turns cloudy and drops the stuff he is picking up. Thud, clatter, thump. At which point he just gives up and says that he is going up to the roof too. Because why put effort into the thing when you can just quit a thing? That's an important life lesson right here. So remember kids, quitters go places in life, like to the roof. Julie is speeding through the house, cleaning up and chiding the boys for skipping out on most of their housework. Hold it, you creeps! Wait, wait, what was that? What just what just happened? Oh, I decided to get my wife to do Julie's lines. We never say Julie's lines, and people say my wife has a young-sounding voice, so I decided to try something. And then Jack starts... Well, okay, let's just get this out of the way right now. Jack is usually our choice for best insults, and rightfully so, but we have a complaint with this issue. Yeah, he goes way, way too far, and it starts right now. He gets the insult ball rolling, and I'm by ball, I mean like giant size Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, opening scene size bowl, rolling by saying, Duck, it's the Wicked Witch of the West, and proceeds to go downhill from there. Alex and Jack are more than happy with pushing their work off on Julie so they can go to the roof to practice their powers. And Katie doesn't help as she disintegrates the garbage and starts glowing like Rudolph's nose. I'm almost done with the trash, Julie. See? And sure enough, it's soon just a grumbling Julie in the apartment, complaining that at least she got her work done. Finished, she does the new black swirling lightning costume on and flies up to the roof in time to see Alex flying past her? Alex has crafted himself a MacGyver jetpack using an old backpack and a fire extinguisher. He's really pleased with himself that he can fly just like Julie until it runs out of juice. <laughs> the kids all fly back inside and Alex demands that they bring him all their money because uh, he has to buy new fire extinguishers. Julie, already mad about the cleaning, is getting really ticked off now. Why is Alex wasting his time and their resources to fly when she can fly everyone around? Each kid has their own piggy bank and it kind of speaks to them individually. Did you notice that? I mean, look at this. Alex has got his R2-D2 bank, which he shakes and comments that he just bought a book on the New York Underground. Foreshadowing. You're soaking in it. Jack shrinks into his incredible Hulk bank and laments that he just bought a new soccer ball, leaving him with a lone quarter. We're probably not soaking any foreshadowing there. No, no, they don't pass by any bubblegum machines. Katie comes running in with her piggy bank, which is like Miss Piggy, because she's young, and Julie's piggy bank, which is the classic piggy bank, which because, well... Julie's a classic. Katie's saying that Julie's is really heavy, so she must have tons of money. Julie is running after Katie, yelling... Give me that, Katie. Julie grabs Katie's hand and... Crash, clatter, smash! Julie now takes her anger to a new level, and with good reason. She points out that her money is her own, and that the fire extinguisher is a dumb idea. Jack, again, really tears into Julie for no good reason. Right. Jack is pressuring Alex into stealing the extinguishers in the basement, and is saying that Julie is the wicked witch trying to be the important one and just wants to push everyone around. Julie is looking angry and hurt, and at least Alex points out that it would be stealing, but... Alex is not sticking up for Julie. In fact, he's exasperated that she won't give him the money that she saved up. So, the next day, as they're heading home from school, there's still hard feelings. At least Katie is apologizing. Listen, Julie, I'm sorry I broke your bank. Please don't be mad at me anymore. I, I just really don't get this, though. I mean, Julie starts by explaining why she upset, but then flops and tries to defend Jack? She says that she is bossy, and, and I'm just not buying this. I mean, if anybody is bossy, it should be Alex. Julie is just being the responsible one. She is the one who's always making sure that the chores get done and that they focus on their real life before the adventure. This is a good thing, if for no other reason it would keep their parents off their case so that they could further adventure. True, but Julie is feeling guilty. She likes that everyone relies on her to fly. She likes being special, and good for her. She's not taking anything away from Alex, but she doesn't need to be giving him her money to support his new flying habit. You know, flying is a gateway power. Once you learn how to successfully throw yourself to the ground and miss, then you are off trying new things like 
talking to dolphins and making excellent sandwiches. Well, her pity party is broken up by a sound. Hey, hey, what? you didn't get that? You didn't get that subtle joke? No, because this isn't issue number 42. Hmm. Well, her pity party is broken up by a sound. Clang! Clatter! Clatter! A cute little kitten runs by with a can tied to its tail. Some true monsters have caused this terrified creature to shoot through the streets and down a street drain. The girls are trying to coax it out, causing the boys to find out what is happening. Here, kitty. Julie explained what is happening by saying that they have to save it. And Jack Boy calls her a bossy witch. Dang it, Jack, knock it off! Jack actually becomes a human being for a second, well, before becoming a cloud, to miss down and check on the kitten. He reports up to the rest of the family that the kitten is not there. While a policeman walks up to find out what is happening, Jack stays below while the rest of the kids explain what is up. Uh, I mean, down. I mean, up, down. Hmm. The insensitive copper points out that the animal is probably drowned by now because of the rain, or been washed down to the city storm drains, and then will just be a nice snack for the alligators. What, did like every male New Yorker wake up and take a double helping of jerk pills this morning? I mean, seriously! The foreshadowing cop advises them to go home because it has started to rain. Doubting the dubious deportment of the departing deputy, the kids double back to a nearby manhole cover, costumes on, and head down below after Alex lifts up, then replaces the heavy manhole cover. You know, this is kind of stupid. But, I mean, if they just looked a little bit harder, they could have found the switch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles use to open up the street to release their Zeppelin. Wait, uh, I know this is off topic, but a Zeppelin? A turtle Zeppelin? Seriously? Yep, seriously. I mean, just go back and look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon from the early 90s. It's in the opening credits, dude. Could have been worse. I mean, it's not like they were trying to hide an SR-71 under their basketball court or something. So now we start the underground adventure. Hey, who turned out the lights? Nice silence in the library reference. What? No, who? I don't- Never fear, Katie is here. She disintegrates some sewage and says Luminos. Julie is not happy that Katie is messing with the sewage, saying that she will probably catch something. Katie points out that she is disintegrating the germs, so she won't, because she's also really sciencey. The super scienciest five-year-old ever. You better believe it. She read it in a coloring book. Yeah. My first yeah. mitochondria. Yeah, my- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And Jack continues his jerk streak, calling Julia witch nose and to shut it. Jeez, Jack, knock it off! Meow. Wait, why are they down here again? Uh, they're looking for the cat. You know, the MacGuffin. The plot device that got in the sewers. The quest item. The reason for their hero's journey. The shiny object. Ah, yeah. Well, since they can hear the cat, they stash their book bags on a ledge and head off into the great black yonder. Adventurers they be! Then they get lost. Yep, that was inevitable. <laughs> So is this. The sewer fills up with rainwater, flushing the power kids away in the gnarliest, most tubular, wet and wild water slide they have ever seen. Hopefully washing out Jack's mouth. With sewer water. Ew. Don't worry, he's a cloud. Nope. He solidifies to grab Julie's hand and... Crack. Proceeds to introduce his skull to the sewer wall. Hooray! Oh, he deserved that. Just before Katie drowns, Alex grabs her arm and they float up to the top of the drain. You know what you never do in a dungeon? I know exactly what you never do. You never pick up a duck in the dungeon. Yeah, what? It might be a duck of doom. Oh, I'm not talking about a munchkin dungeon. I'm talking about a dungeon dungeon. Ah, okay. So what do you never do in a dungeon? Split the party. You also never eat pizza in a dungeon. Or a sewer. Spoilers, listeners. We are going to keep on doing turtle jokes. Throughout this entire run. Back to the kids. Thanks to some tunnel splits, echoey walls, and bad choices, the kids are now in two groups. Julie is holding Jack up, who is recovering from his, what, 200th concussion? Now, I'm starting to think that his bad attitude is actually a medical condition from too many blows to the bean. You may be right, but before he can yell out to Alec, Julie covers his mouth. Something's brushed by her. There's something alive in here. Yeah, well, the kids have a bad feeling about this. That was a spiny green back that just floated by them. Back with Team Catlix. Really? Yep, I'm keeping that name. Alex is moving slowly since he can only float and bounce off walls. Katie tells him to go back and get his jetpack so they can fly around. Alex reluctantly agrees and they leave the sewers and bounce to their home. Meanwhile, with Team Double J, <sighs> it, they are freaking out. They can hear the cat. Meow but they can't see the alligators or anything else. And this is not a good thing, no matter what Martha Stewart says. So we have a kid who can fly and one who can cloud up. So how are they going to get out of the water? Well, the one child who can fly lifts up the one who can cloud, which causes both of them to crash into a wall. Bump! Splash! 
And the reason why the Cloud Boy does not cloud and the Fly Girl does not fly is because Jack doesn't want them to get separated and lost. That doesn't make sense. Neither does finding an old map in your attic and going on a pirate treasure hunt. That doesn't stop another group of kids from heading underground to do so on an adventure. Ruth! Ruth! Baby! Ruth! <laughs> yeah, I love kid logic failures. Jack should cloud and follow Julie flying. Why is this so hard? I don't know, but speaking of bad choices, let's move back to uh, Catlex. They're boosting a couple of their building's fire extinguishers. Actually, Alex is having a deep moral dilemma, because stealing is bad. Luckily, the anti-Jiminy Cricket Kitty posits a succinct argument. It's an emergency. It's the only way. Alex gives in faster than, um, the script says, insert something clever. How about Michelangelo devouring a pizza? Yeah, that works. And the kids clip the quenching contraptions and descend down the drains. You know, sometimes I think we should go back in and put in the actual words when we say, insert something here. Nah. Meanwhile, in the midst of some of my worst nightmares... Yeah, <sighs> Team Double J is splashing through the dark sewer as a congregation of alligators are surrounding them. But good news, they found the kitten. Hooray? Yeah, thanks a lot, cat. We're in a dark and smelly sewer surrounded by snapping monsters. You better be able to lead us back to a pot of gold or something. It's okay. It does do something. It scratches Julie. Of course. Jack tries pushing up the manhole cover, but a quick clouding through the hole reveals a car parked on the cover. Julie takes this moment to scream. It's a gator attack! No, Jeff. She screams something else. As well she should. Which alerts Catlex. Jack starts to do his jackhammering so Julie can try ascending out of snapping distance. Jack, after surviving all of this trauma and horribleness in the sewers, has finally learned his lesson. And he takes this opportunity to show his caring side and encourages Julie by saying... Now climb, pea brain. Jack. Well, never fear. Destructo Girl is here. Shrekow! Get away from my sister! Alex joins in by triggering the extinguisher on the attacking reptiles. The kids ascend the ladder, and Alex throws his extinguisher to an unclouded Jack, saying that if any gators get too close to let them have it. This puts Jack into full-on vigilante mode as he smashes a gator in the face with his new Gator Buster. Come on, alligator. Make my day. Eat hot extinguisher, fang face. Wait. Eat hot extinguisher? That's not how they work. You even did a cowboy science corner on it like in issue seven. I don't think that he listened to that show. Alex lifts the cover and car off their egress and they blast out of the sewer with the kitten. Hooray! Yes, they truly have completed their hero's journey and long will they remember this quest. Codename, Operation Cat's Cradle. And the cat's in the sewer with a silver can. Little boy Jack and Julie have ran. When you coming back, Sibs, we don't know when. But the gators won't get you then. You know the gators won't get you then. Interesting note here. Julie comments that she saw some of the alligators wearing collars and that she heard a piping music as she was leaving. Jack, of course, takes this as an opportunity to talk to Julie on an emotional level. After all, she did save him from drowning, and he refused to leave her side in the sewers, even though he could have safely escaped any time he wanted to. Truly, this has been a healing time of understanding. Man, Julie, that sewer water's rotted your brain. Come on, let's go home. Okay, that's it, that's it. Uh, I give up. I mean... Seriously, way to go, Jack. Way to go. You really put the jerk in classy, if you get my meaning. Back at home, Julie has collected their uniforms and is loading the washing machine because she doesn't care if these things are magical. They've just spent an afternoon in the sewer and are disgusting. Did she check the tags to see if they're machine safe? I'm assuming yes, but I fear that the instructions were in chameleon. Well, I am sure that there will not be any consequences with these actions. Probably not. A fun aside here is that it's obvious that Alex has no clue how to do laundry, as he's just pouring powder detergent onto the clothes outside of the washer. While Julie is correctly loading the washer and Alex is making a detergent mess for Julie to clean up, they have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Alex admits that he should not be taking money from others, and if he wants to learn to fly, that's his problem. Julie? Well, Julie says that Alex was right, that his choices saved her life. What? I mean, I have an issue with this. I think Julie is learning the wrong lesson here. I agree with her for wanting to help Alex pay for the extinguishers. They were helpful in saving her life. 
but I think she is excusing Alex's and also Jack's bullying of her stepping up to them. I just can't help but feel that her resolution and her standing up is seen as bossiness. Well, the older kids are interrupted by Katie, who is holding the kitten, saying that she never wants to go back to the sewers again, but that they have to, because they forgot to get their backpacks when they fled. Ow! Much face palming commences. Next issue? Wait, wait, wait. This issue's not over yet. We have a stinger page. Really? Heh, well, look at that. Yep, we focus in on the manhole cover, and some notes of music are drifting upwards. Focus in further, we see the backpacks and a shadowy figure. Closer in, a book is open, with Katie Power's name and address. And then, a hand petting a collared alligator, followed by a man walking down the sewers with the backpacks, telling the alligator that... You were naughty today, Rudolph. You shouldn't have frightened them so. They are children, after all. But they frightened you too, didn't they? Such interesting powers, and so loyal to each other, and so courageous and responsible. So of course they will return for the school books, and we'll be waiting. They'll make such delightful Morlocks, won't they? Okay, that is some creepy and ominous prose right there. Next issue, Underground. Again. Da 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 yeah. So, let's talk about the themes, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Talking about the themes. Talking about the themes. Okay. Let's talk about bad cops. <laughs> 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 he may not have been a bad cop, but he definitely was not an empathic cop. Oi, 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 what's going on here? What's up, what's up, what's up? Pip, 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 pip. A little kitten went into the storm drain. Hello, hello, hello. What is happening here? I got my billy club here. I'm a copper. He does have a billy club. He does he have a billy club. Yeah, he was spinning around. I, too, I, I tell you, we, we should have just done this voice as... I, okay, there are four kids walking along. You got a beat cop here. It's starting to rain. Go on home, kids. Go on home. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. No, no, no. <laughs> No, I just love the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, a cute little kitten fell in a storm drain. Eh, it's probably dead. Eh, or it's going to be uh, washed away and eaten by alligators. All right, so, go home now. It's raining. So so maybe we missed it. Maybe it's another nationality altogether, one that hates cats. Who knows? I, I, just, I just, yeah. I, so. Yeah, it just, it's just, I, I just want to see him interacting with more people where it's like, <laughs> my my child's missing. Yeah, probably joined the circus and uh, I don't know, didn't like you. And here's the and here's the worst part. This guy is not even the worst person in this entire comic book. No, when you were saying that, uh, like all the men took a, a jerk pill that morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is almost entirely true. Except there is one scene in the comic where uh, the kids are coming back from school, and another little kid goes, "Bye, Alex. Bye, Jack. See you tomorrow at school." And that is the only male that was in this that has any kind of uh, humanity at all. Although he was only being nice to the other boys, I mean, he probably was thinking nasty thoughts about the girls. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I mean, so it's, like... I think I think it's I think it's the jerk pills that all the men are just mean to. Well, really, Julie. Yeah, basically, <laughs> Julie. Yeah. Yeah, that's really what all it boils down to. Everybody was great with Katie. But I, I think the worst person still is Jack. He's horrible. He uh, Did you notice in one of the uh, the art panels, uh, he's a cloud and he's behind Julie and he's doing the old thumbs in the ears going na-na-na-na? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's <laughs> just, he is horrible horrible the entire time he, he just says terrible things he talks about julie's nose at one point which nose? which nose? it's just mean i mean yes jack is me but this is just another level and it's just ah but then we have julie and i i think you know yes julie is being picked on and you know made fun of by both of her brothers and katie's okay i guess to her i mean but you know she does steal her money <laughs> But Julie just, when she stands up for herself, she's picked on. And so she backs down. Yeah, and then she flops over to kind of the, you know, it's like, okay, she kind of goes into a victim category. And then she's kind of blaming herself for saying, oh, well, you know, he's, you know, the person that was uh, victimizing me was correct because I am the way that they were saying. Right. Where really it was like, no, they weren't doing their chores and they were being mean to you and you were doing, you know, like your responsibilities. I think Julie is right throughout this entire issue, except when she folds like a cheap suit. Yeah. I mean, she just, she backs down to the peer pressure of the rest of her family. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's a good interpretation of her. And I, I hope she grows a little bit better going forward. I mean, I do think that her talking to Alex at the, at the end of the episode, mm -hmm. she was able to kind of stake her claim and Alex did re listen to her and respect yeah. her. And I think that they did get somewhere close to it, but I still think that she 
caved in a little too much. That's she, just my thoughts. Yeah, she did. She really did. Which was too bad. Yeah, Jack was extremely insulting for no reason. I mean, yeah, much more so than he normally is. Alex was, you know, basically just going, I want a jetpack. Give me your money. Oh, you have concerns. I don't care. Just, I just want to do the thing. Yes. And Katie was just, yeah, she's Katie. She was happy to be involved. We have for ourselves here a little bit of a fetch quest. Yes. That's a simple story, I would like to say. The kids are going down into the sewer chasing after a cat that's gone missing, and they get lost in the sewers. I, I know that I was having a hard time my first couple read-throughs just going, why isn't why don't Jack and Julie just fly out of there? Mm-hmm. Because they can just fly out on their own. But then I realized, wait, they are in a sewer, and Katie is not there to provide yeah. illumination. There's no light. They can't There's see. There's no light. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe there could have been a little bit better writing or something else to really cue you in on that. I don't know. Yeah, The well, the thing that I think kind of threw you on that is that they're showing, you know, in the art that right. they're showing... They're showing what's happening. They're showing the sewer. They're showing the water. They're showing the alligator. They're showing which the... they have to. Yeah, they have to because otherwise it would just be a blacked out square with some word panels. I think I think the kids need to be saying more like you know I can't leave you because I can't see. Yeah. Now here's the thing that I thought about with this though, where you were saying why isn't Jack a cloud that he hangs out with the flying Julie? And it's like well okay they can't see. He could have been a cloud. Also I'm kind of like she makes a rainbow. Did it not? Does it not provide enough light? Or like her you know her hover nimbus does it not provide enough light where they could be able to actually see kind of where they are? They've never used it as a source of illumination, so no. I would say no. Okay. I think it's more of an artistic design. Okay. It's weird that we're saying that that a rainbow, which is kind of a light kind of thing, mm-hmm. wouldn't be seen in darkness, but... Well, let's say that they would be able to see the rainbow in the dark. Uh, ex- if there was light. No, well, yeah, well, maybe it's even there, but it, it, it provides no exterior illumination. There's yeah. no, you know, it's just like, oh, cool, now there's a ribbon, uh, but I still can't see anything. I think it's going to be a lot like, uh, I'm going to do my own little science corner here. Okay, you will. go for it, buddy. I think that's going to be very much like a regular rainbow, that you cannot see a regular rainbow in the dark. You can see it when light is coming through a specific... Are you telling me that Ronnie James Dio lied to me? So, moving on... <laughs> Ah, so yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is that they kept the rainbow in for the artistic purpose of saying, yes, she's flying and moving and bouncing off walls and stuff, but they're not able to see it because there is no light to reflect. Okay, yeah, we can go for that. I'm going to go for that one. And I will leave Dio alone. Okay, yeah. (laughs) 415, baby. 415. I got myself a book from the library, sir. I know. I was impressed with you for going to the library to find said book, since yes. you were having such a hard time discovering it or finding it anywhere else. Well, they mentioned a book in here. Yes. And it was called Underground. Yes. It was a book that Alex bought back in the 1980s, and I did my first go-to when I do any research. I asked Mr. Internets mm-hmm. about a book called Underground, and that provided me no information whatsoever. <laughs> Once I actually went to our local library and put in, or actually I went to the Clackamas County Library System online and put in Underground and started looking through books that would have been out at that time, I came across a book that I am sure is the one that Alex was talking about. It is called Underground. It's written by David McCullier. I believe I got that name right. And this is a book that was published in 1976, and it features text and drawings that describe the subway, sewers, building foundations, telephone and power systems, columns, cables, pipes, tunnels, and other underground elements of a large modern city. This is a pretty fascinating book. I got it from the library this Sunday, and I was able to read through it this over the next couple of nights. And I was really amazed, not only by this book, but also by David McAuley. I actually remember another book that this guy has written called How Things Were. This is back more in the later 80s. And I remember my parents bought it, and I always loved that book. And I think there was one that was called How Things Work, and there was another follow-up book that was also in that same series as well. David takes a lot of modern, well, in this book, it's a lot of modern architecture and a lot of modern excavation and building techniques. And he not only describes them in pretty simple terms, Mm -hmm. but he also does a really fascinating job of drawing the architecture in a 3D open model so that you can actually see like foundations underground without the ground there. So they actually have people like standing on the bedrock looking up at these underground columns of foundation. I was going to say, and, that's my favorite piece of art and in it, the book. And it's, and it's just amazing yeah, looking it, at, at this because you get a real understanding of what, you know, what buildings look like underground, what a lot of the infrastructure looks like underground, and how it all works and how it all kind of fits together if you just remove the dirt that surrounds it. It is really cool. It's You're looking up, uh, you're well below ground level, you're looking up at the foundations, you're looking up 
up at the street with no street. So there's cars going, there's all the, it's just everything and the people walking and it just looks so cool. So I, I can really see about what they did with this book and how it fits into what Louis Simonson is trying to talk about with the sewers that they're going under. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are going underground, underground looking at the sewers. They are in that system that's described in this book. Did you notice that when they were showing the, sh uh, the sewer system, the, in one of the pipes there was a, an alligator in it? Yes. Yeah, yes. It, it's, it's funny because in not every piece of, yeah, not every picture, but in some of them he has a little kind of like Easter egg teaser thing. Yes, he's, yeah. he's got little alligators and some pipes. He's got little mice that are crawling around yeah. inside manhole uh, cones or manhole rooms that are underneath underground that are distribution pipe points it's a very fascinating and interesting book and as far as kid friendly i picked this up actually in the kids section of the oh, wilsonville super kid friendly. Yeah, yeah this was in the kids section of the wilsonville library in nearby portland i i just was very impressed and i i was kind of amazed to know that this author that i was trying to hunt down i knew of his other work <laughs> He is very well known. He has won a lot of different awards. And it's just a very interesting and amazing book. And yeah, like you said, there is just, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. I know I showed you things like this, but they have a thing here where they look at a city corner and you see like four different, you know, see different that's buildings and yep, stuff. That's the one. And if you look really closely, you can see one of them is actually Science Corner. Oh, it <laughs> is. Why, my goodness, there I am standing there with a subject in hand to talk about. There you go, sir. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to until we got there. And then I was like, wait, I know what's happening. And then you said, Science Corner. I'm like, yep, there you are. Okay. Well, here we are in Science Corner, and let's talk about something in this issue. What Are we, are we going to talk about sewers? We are not going to talk about sewers. We're, are we going to talk about Morlocks? Uh, no, we're not going to talk about Morlocks. We're going to talk about something else that was living underground in this episode. Are we going to talk about cats? Yes, yes, it's the history of sewer cats. Ew. Yeah, they're the disgusting. I, would uh, think I so. couldn't. I couldn't find a lot of uh, information on them. It just said sewer cats. See, ew. No, what we're going to talk about is since there were alligators in here, I'm going to. And in fact, there were swarms of alligators. I am going to tell you the eight ways to tell alligators and crocodiles apart, Ooh. since they're very similar, and people might not know what you know what they look like. So, folks, this is educational because now when you're in the wild and you come across something scaly and large, you can actually look at it and try to decide whether it's an A, alligator, B, a crocodile, or C, a scaly human who is repugnant to everybody, including women. Yeah, it's just killer croc. Okay, so there was uh, tons of alligators in this episode, but people may not know what the difference between an alligator and a crocodile is. So here is a list of eight ways to tell alligators and crocodiles apart. One, the shape of the snout. The crocodile snout is pointed and V-shaped and the alligators is wide and U-shaped. Two, location. Alligators are only found in parts of the US and China, whereas crocodiles can be found across the world. Three, habitat. Crocodiles prefer water that is more saline or salty than an alligator's preferred freshwater habitat. Four, toothy grin. Crocodiles can't hide their teeth, but alligators' teeth are sometimes hidden when their mouths are closed because their upper jaw is larger. 5. Size. A full-grown crocodile will likely be several feet longer than an adult alligator. 6. Color. Crocodiles are generally lighter in color than alligators. 7. Speed. On land and in water, crocodiles are usually slower than alligators. 8. Behavior. In terms of aggression, an alligator might seem tame compared to a crocodile. So those were the eight ways that you can tell alligators and crocodiles apart. But you know, there actually is one more defining feature that is actually quite important in telling them apart. And it is this. You see one later and the other after a while. Back to you, Rick. <clears throat> there are times in this podcast <laughs> where I'm given a line or given a look or have to follow up something that Jeff has done. And I have no other choice but to say these words to him. Final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary reminded me of that joke, and I'm like, guess I'm doing things about alligators and crocodiles then. <sighs> All that was a setup for a dad joke. You're welcome. And you want to know something? Hmm? I did not even read it, and it was, and I was staring at the script there. <laughs> I actually stopped after just the, you know, eight behavior, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, I got my own joke I got to do. <laughs> and then I looked down. I, I didn't even read it. I just you started saying, I'm going... I can't get out of the way. It's like, <laughs> it's like there's this giant train coming at me with like, you know, handbags and shoes and belts on it. 
<laughs> it was like the train movie Unstoppable. With alligator parts. With alligator parts. <laughs> the scariest train movie ever. <laughs> refrigerator gallery. Okay. What piece of art in this book needs to be put on the family refrigerator? Okay. Uh, I... You've got a joke one, right? Of course I've got, a, got joke a joke one. one. I can't not have a joke one. Bring me the joke one. Okay, so on page two... Page two. I call this one Minimal Effort, and it's in the bottom right-hand corner. And it is uh, Jack turning into a cloud and just dropping books everywhere, going, why even try? I can't what? pick up anything up as a cloud. <laughs> I'm a cloud. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> he's just... He's trying. He's supposed to be cleaning up, and he kind of picks stuff up, and he's flipping through the magazines and books and stuff, and he's like, I can't use my super powers i guess i'll just throw stuff on the floor <laughs> why well, walk over there like a sucker yeah. i won't use my power i can't use my powers <laughs> so that's my joke <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and give you my backup one. okay and my backup one is page 20 and i'm calling this one pile of gators oh that's a good one <clears throat> yeah this is my backup one and this is the one where you got the four kids climbing up out of the sewers at the end you got alex on top of the ladder and he's pushing up on the manhole cover and pushing the car away and you got julie and katie kind of sharing the same rung and julie's holding on to the cat and down below you got jack the man he's got this fire extinguisher he's bashing a crocodile but below that crocodile is one two three four a lot yeah it, it, it <laughs> there's is like about seven crocodiles just they're using each other as a ladder a, yep. it's a crocodile ladder oh ah, that's a great name for it yeah Yep, trademark. Wait a minute, croco, <coughs> crocoladder? Are the crocodiles right? Alligators. No, they're they're alligators. Yeah, croc crocoladder works. <laughs> crocoladder works. So does a uh, alligator. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, uh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, that's that is a good piece of art. I was looking at that one pretty seriously. There was here was the problem. A lot of really good art. A lot of good episode. art. I mean, or issue. It, one, a lot uh, of really. You know, good we art. forgot to mention that you know after the two issue mini run that we just got through with the Marina uh, Snake Eyes saga, we are now back to a three issue run. It's a three issue arc that's starting here with problems, and it's going to go to some fun places. Mm -hmm. But we are back to June Brigman as our regular penciler. Yay! So, yay, June Brigman. You know, she's pretty cool. Yeah. She's very cool. She's really neat. Yeah. And she's back, I mean, from her two-issue break with some darn fine art. No, what she you... is filling every panel with stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. What do you got for your backup, sir? My backup is on page 11, and I call it Wipeout! I think that this is my top one. It was, it was in contention for first place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just great. It's just this, uh, you know, the rainwater came in, and all the kids are getting swirled away, uh, you know, it's just it and it is like i said it is a wet and wild water ride because the water is just doing a giant like drain swirl but it's going up onto the ceiling and around it is just I, crazy i call it horizontal whirlpool and and like he's like he said it's just it's like a whirlpool that's going down the tunnel and all the kids are getting sucked in it Front and foremost, you got Julie's face, and you just see the pure panic on oh, yeah. her face. But it's, you know, Alex in his cloud, or Jack, Jack in his cloud, cloud form are, is getting sucked into the water as well. It's it's very, very cool. Yeah. So that's why I got that I, your backup, my top pick. Way to go. No, it was, I was that was, again, very close. That's a, that's a nifty picture. Mm -hmm. That is really, really great art right there. What you got on your uh, top one, my, my friend? My top one is, if you go to page 10. Page 10. Yep, on the top left, I call this one Power Pack the Album. <laughs> It is uh, the kid, you know, it's it's great because it's all kind of like in silhouette and it's really dark shading and everything. Uh, they had just climbed down a manhole cover and there's just like little like little raindrops of light coming out of the holes in the manhole cover and all the kids are... Well, three uh, of the kids. Well, three of the kids are looking in different directions like they're in an album cover. So I said, that's just kind of cool. I I can go with that one. That's a that's a good one too. Yeah. You know what I'm kind of happy is that none of us wanted the panels with the cat. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah. no, we did. We did. The cat was in uh, was in my one with the pile of gators. Oh, you know you're right. But it was it's very tiny, so it's okay. Yeah, I had another one that was right near that. Yeah, it was on page 16. It was the top, and I was going to call it 710 Split. It's when uh, Alex and Katie come in, and, and she power blasts, or power balls, uh, a handful oh, of yep, gators. Yep, yeah, yep. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, so is this art. Oh, so is there's, this There's there a lot a of good lot. ones. And, and like always, all of the art pieces that we put up are on our webpage, jeffandmerkpresent.wordpress.com. Please go there, because we do show a lot of the pictures that we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about... Uh, I, I kind of hate to bring this one up this time because Jack was so horrible mm -hmm. but I'm gonna go ahead we have to do it rubber and glue moment yep. what was the best or most childish insult <sighs> 
What do you got? What's your backup? My backup is on page three, and it's a twofer. It's the very top. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Julie flying into the, you know, it's the, the boys are not doing their chores, and they're going to go to the roof and yep. go play, go practice. And Julie comes flying in, who's still doing chores, and she's all, Hold it, you creeps. And then Jack responds with, Duck, it's the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, I, I had Julie saying creeps is my top one there, oh, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's just hold it, you creeps. It's just fantastic. Yeah, I, I liked, I, I do have a Jack one as my as my backup, but I, I just okay. didn't really like, yeah. Jack was rough in this episode, or, the, or uh, episode issue. Yeah, Jack was really rough in yeah. this issue. Uh, See, my, my Jack one, my backup one for Jack was on mm-hmm. page 15, and it was uh, Jack saying, Because if we get separated, flea brain, I'll never find you again. As much as Jack was being horrible, I like flea brain. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, he, even though he was terrible, he still had some great stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was just, there was a lot of it. And it was really kind of like, hi, Jack, I was thinking about going to the library. Why don't you go die in a ditch, Julie? Yeah, it's just, just kind of real rough, man. Mm-hmm. So what do you got as your uh, your favorite insult? My favorite insult, my number one, is on page 20, right down at the bottom, uh, bottom middle. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I've already said it in the episode, but uh, again, it is Jack going, eat hot extinguisher, fang face. I'm willing to accept that <laughs> yeah. one, because... It's Jack calling a alligator that. So. Yeah, he's not directing it at Julie, so... Uh, way to go, yeah, way to go. That made that one my number one. All right, let's talk about stars in detention. We want to talk about who was the best and who was the worst in this issue. Let's go ahead and say the sign. The worst in this issue was... Everybody. <laughs> Specifically, it was... Jack. Jack. Yeah. He was horrible. He he's was just terrible. Horrible. Yeah, all of them were... All of them were kind of terrible one way or the other. All of them had a bad moment. And Mm -hmm. I think that we're going to talk a little bit more about that once we point out who our favorite was. Because it's kind of picking out who was our favorite in in a a (laughs) sea of badness. And I'll say my favorite. My favorite is Julie. Yeah, Julie. I I think that Julie had it really rough. I I do think that she she backed off more than she should have. I think she should have stood her ground. I think that, you know... Being a strong woman, being a strong girl, I, that we need to support that. We don't. We need to make sure that somebody's standing up, a girl standing up and saying, "No, this is what I believe. This is what I think should happen. Mm-hmm. Should not be called bossy." Yeah. Because a man doing that is, or a boy doing that is thought of as being, you know, courageous and heroic, leadershipy, leadershipy. Yeah. And girls are taught told that it's bossy, and that is not right, and that is wrong. Yeah. And I think that we should support women and support girls. We both have daughters. That's how I'm teaching my daughter. That's yeah. my soapbox. No, that's a, that's a great soapbox. <laughs> you know, other reasons why we picked her for the best would be uh, she was the actual one of three children to actually complete her chores. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Katie comes in close second because she disintegrated some trash. But they actually show like Katie and Julie's bedroom uh, when Julie's finishing up her chores, and Julie's side is immaculate and tidy and just crisp. Bounce a quarter on it, you know, bed sheet kind of thing. It was just precision. And then you get to Ju- uh, Katie's half, and it's just a sty. She she completes her chores. She's saving her money for some i mean well to be fair i don't think any of the kids really wasted their money on anything they wanted i mean you know jack bought a soccer ball he's an athletic kid Mm -hmm. uh alex bought a book he's a smart kid julie was saving her money nothing at all wrong with it but i mean you know julie just always comes across as a responsible one in this issue and in particular i think that as far as the other children go i i have real hard time with katie not only for stealing julie's money but also what a bad little jiminy cricket (laughs) yeah go ahead alex steal the fire extinguisher (laughs) do it alex nobody will mind no one will ever know (laughs) do it do Do it it. and (laughs) and and alex i mean i just wish he would get over this fascination of making a jetpack and and i think he does after this issue he comes up with another gimmick to fly that's fine he, he stops trying to use expendable products that really don't help. Yeah, he can't recharge them. Well, he technically could, but he can't afford to. No, it's yeah. it's not. It's not. I no. I I understand why he is excited about figuring out that he can fly too. Because uh, floating is awesome. Flying, flying is, is better. better. Yeah, so it makes sense that he'd want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, the, but also back to Julie. You know, it's like uh, she saved Jack's life when he got knocked out. But then again, Alex saved Katie from drowning because she was going down in the sewer water. You know, it's like they yeah. all kind of did some heroic stuff. Julie also was willing to. You know, it's like Jack, get out of here, go get help. So she was willing to self sacrifice for yeah. him. Uh, you know, there's reasons that we picked her as number one. But everybody kind of had some moments. But everybody really had not moments as well. Yeah. But Julie and Jack, we agree again. Yeah, totally agree on that. Yep. So cheers. Cheers. G force it. Give me a G. G. And that's the count that we got. One. Right at the beginning. 
We had one G in this episode. Yep. One G. So one G. So there you Same go. Same as always. Same as always. Yeah. What are we uh, up to? We are up to a grand total of 26 Gs, which is in that two and a half times jet plane maneuvering G forces. And our uh, G average is 2.36 now, Ooh. which means we have left the amusement park. Hooray! Now, so I'm a little sad about leaving the amusement park, but what's kind of... Because it's been going down. Sure. But what's interesting about it is that we have left the amusement park and have started to go towards Jupiter's gravity, which has a gravity of 2.4. And I'm going to say that 2.36 is a rounding issue, and so basically you're pretty much at Jupiter's gravity right now. Would there be a part of Jupiter that we could be on to meet that gravity? It's like, you know, like, like low down, high up. Probably somewhere, sure. <laughs> Probably higher up if you're in the upper. And atmosphere. this has been another report from Mr. Science Boy. <laughs> if you want science in the most hand wavy, kind of shaky way possible, come here, listen to me talk. So, but yeah, so we're out of the amusement park and approaching a, the biggest planet in our solar system. And there we are. There's our G's. Speaking of big planets, let's talk about big grades. That was a nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could see how that could go dangerously wrong. Speaking of big planets. <laughs> so, uh, top grades. We want to evaluate each issue against the rest of the series. And we are on issue number 11. So, um, we're on a new story arc. Mm -hmm. First of a new story arc. What do you think? I, I, I like it. It's a very light story. Yeah. It's, it's adventure -y. It's not really, you know, they aren't fighting a supervillain. They're fighting... They're fighting water. They're fighting rain. They're fighting water. They're and fighting alligators. alligators. Yeah. They're, um, oh, you know what they are? They are a uh, standard adventure movie trope from, sure. say, the 50s through 80s. Where well, the sandal like, and sand type thing. Yeah. Sure, you know. Yeah, it was like, you know, it's like, we're going, we're jungle explorers. <laughs> oh, no, quicksand. And now what? Ah, alligators. In the so. middle in the middle of an urban environment, we have a jungle adventure. Yeah, basically. It really um, is that. So, I, you know, the, the, the stakes are... <laughs> and the stakes couldn't be lower. Well, they are in the sewers. They are in the sewer. <laughs> they could be in the sub sewers. Um, uh, like I said, it's a bit of a fetch crest. They, fetch they, quest. They've, yeah. they've, they've, they've got the cat. They got the little kitty cat. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, I, I'm not a cat fan, but you know, we we got a cat that's got a that's got a string and a can tied to its tail, which is pretty horrible. You're not a cat fan. You have three cats. We'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, okay. I, I get that. <laughs> but it's it's it's, so it's it's not it's not a great. It's not a deep deep adventure but at the same time these are still the stories i do like because oh, yeah. we see the kids a lot of a lot of this is about the kids interacting with each other and the kids having the normal kid life i mean really you take out the powers and you got kids arguing about kids stuff oh yeah you know you could be like instead of just doing the chores and instead of flying around and clouding out and everything yeah. you could just be like no i don't want to do this i want to play on the roof right. okay you replace uh, flying around and floating in the sewers, and they just saw a cat and they went down and they had a, a sewer adventure. And then they were like, you know, instead of going, oh, I'm going to G power the uh, <clears throat> the manhole cover up and everything, you know, in the car off of it, it would be like, oh, the car's moved, we can get out now. Now, now the first time through I read this, I actually did not like it. It's going through it a couple of times and realizing with it making more sense that it's so dark down there that they can't see and Julie and Jack can't get away from mm -hmm. each other, it makes more sense. Hmm. It makes a lot more sense that, yes, they can't just do the simple thing of, we'll just both fly and we'll just keep up with each other. Mm -hmm. No, they've already lost half of the party. Yeah. You know, half the party is one And their light to, source. And their light source. So they can't see. They're afraid of really getting away from each other. So they have to stay together, which then, of course, means that they're in trouble. I mean, and really, too, Julie can't fly down the sewers because she's just going to be flying down the sewers in the dark and run into a wall. Yeah. The, you know, just thinking about it, she could have slowly flown. She could have, you know, floated, up, hovered up to the sure. ceiling and then slowly but it just, flown in a direction, but, yeah, dragging it, her hands kind of thing. Yeah, whatever. So it, it's still, it's like, okay, they have to be together. So it yeah. makes sense. Our midway point is usually homecoming, which is issue five. It's now it's ranked as number place. six. So it's a good midway kind of story. Plus mm -hmm. also it's, it also is one of these stories that it's not really too much of an adventure story. Mm -hmm. It's even though it is the adventures of Link, yeah. <laughs> it is uh, more of a, you know, they're at home, they're interacting with each other. It's more of a character story. Mm -hmm. So, how do we think that this character story reacts to the other character story? Yeah, it's funny that you would actually mention Homecoming and everything, because I was using that as my basis. Mm -hmm. And I think that I like Homecoming a little bit better than this. So I would put uh, keep Homecoming at 6, and I would put this at the new number 7. I'm agreeing. I, that would put it above Butterfinger, which I 
I, I agree with that because I think that this is definitely a better story than Butterfinger still, which mm-hmm. Butterfinger was their first, their second issue that man, was this one fought against uh, Carmody the first time. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. That's, that's where we introduced Stan the Guard. That's where we introduced Stan the Guard. I love Stan. I love Stan the He's Guard. He's led such a hard life. We haven't gone back to him yet. We haven't seen we Stan. We haven't seen another guard. I mean, we could yeah. have done something. We could have said, he became a policeman. And no, then he, but no, no, no. He, no, he's he not, has to be a night watchman. He's got to be a nice watchman or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that there's another Stan the Guard moment. But oh, Stan. I don't know if there is. We miss you. Yeah, we do miss, we do miss Stan. All right. So let's do some final thoughts on this beer. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the beer? How uh, many Powerballs you want to give this bad boy? Well, uh, I kind of been sipping at it. It's not super doing it for me. It's fine. It's really? not. Yeah, it's not like oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, it's dark like the sewer, and it had an alligator on the bottle like the sewer had it, so it totally did tie in yep. to the uh, to the uh, issue at hand. I'm good with that. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. It's right. It's a three. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's not. It, I would drink if somebody said, "Hey, I brought you a beer." I'd be like, "Okay, I'll drink that," but I don't think I'd hunt it out on my own. I I'm giving this a little bit more credit. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four. I mean, wow. this this is not blowing me out of the park, but. Mm-hmm. You line this up with a lot of other beers, I will take this okay. a lot of times, especially if it be in a macro brew from Brazil, if I'm ever down okay. that way. Yeah. I could definitely go into a bar and say, yep, I will have one of those. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I tend to like the sweeter kind of stuff anyways. I don't mind a good lager if it's good. It does have a real sweet finish on yeah. it. Yeah, and I like the sweet finish on this for a lager. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one a four power balls. Okay. All right. Yep. Kids' perspective is where we ask a question or premise of Rick's seven-year-old daughter, and we get her opinion on the book. So, Rick and Carrie, take it away. Hello there, Carrie. Hello. How are you today? Good. You just finished reading the comic book. What'd you think of it? Good. What happened in this comic book? The main background was the sewers, which is a little disgusting. A little disgusting? Why? Because that's where all trash sometimes goes. Mm -hmm. We saw some trash in it. There was water, crocodiles, lots of other stuff that's kind of gross. Why did they go to the sewers? To rescue a kitten. Do you like cats? Well, Mommy does. I'm sort of in the middle of cats and dogs and, well, I sort of like every animal except for the ones that... Do you like crocodiles? No alligators. No crocodiles. Is it because they smell or because they try to bite you? Because they can harm. Oh, okay. All right. So they went to the sewers to get a kitten. How did that work out for them? It worked out a little bit good, but they did get split apart. They did get split apart and they had to figure out their own way, didn't they? Luckily, Katie and Alex got back to the powerhouse, got Alex's jetpack, and then they went back to the sewers where they got, where they were able to get to Julie and Jack. What do you think about Julie and Jack? How are they getting along? Well, Julie did have to carry Jack a lot. What were some of the things that Jack was saying to Julie? Was he calling her a lot of names? Mm-hmm. What about the very end? What do you think happened there? A man was who took care of the crocodiles or alligators, which alligators. Mm-hmm. Um, he found out that they were being a little naughty, and then he noticed that the kids were nice, and he gave a little bit of compliments, and he knew that their books were there, so. He's think... expecting them to come back. Hmm. Do you think he's going to be nice to them when they come back? Or do you think he's going to be mean to them when they come back? I don't know. We better go find out in the next comic book. That's right. All right. I think you said a lot, Carrie. I think you're really good paying attention. Do you have a favorite character or is there a favorite scene in the book you like? Julie was carrying Jack a lot and seems like she have been an- ignoring Jack calling her name. So that's one. And Alex, he and Katie tried to get them, them back. And Katie, because she helped Alex and she also told him that he could do something so he, she, like, helped him that way, and she also shouted, Get away from my sister! <laughs> okay. For some reason, Jack calls names. Yeah, so you don't. So you like Jack the least, right, in this book? Yeah, a little bit. Anything else you want to say about the book? So, yeah, the sewers is the main background, and then they went back home. Katie noticed that they forgot their books, and that's when the stranger showed up. I don't know why, but he wants them to meet him. But he's a stranger. Do the kids know him or not? Probably not. But it was just a shadow. You could only see his shadow. 
We'll have to look at the next issue to find out more about him, won't we? That's all that we got then. Thank you very much, Carrie. Okay. I love you very much. I love you too, Daddy. Bye. Well, that was cute. That was adorable. I love that. Well, apparently, you know, people like what we do. Because they keep wanting to give us some shout outs, so we like to shout out back at them. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime uh, we get a message from anybody or a Twitter or anything, it's just, it's really awesome. And it's so cool to have uh, engagement with you guys that are listening to us. We really do appreciate it. And it's, it's just fun. And it's also kind of this refreshing, like, hey, hey, this guy in England wrote in and he said this. Hey, this guy over here said this. Oh, it's just, it's just, it makes us feel really good. It's great. And that's why we want to say some thank yous to people like Rebus02, who left us a really nice comment on iTunes. They said that Power Pack was their first comic they collected, and they feel that this show could not be in better hands. Thank you for the great comments. Speaking of a person from the UK, we have Scott Sutton, and he wrote us to say, Hello, I recently found your podcast, and I'm a huge fan of Power Pack, and now you two are my new best friends. Well, welcome, new best friend. (laughs) That's really great. I'm only on episode one, and I'm looking forward to more. And I'm also interested in showing you my Power Pack tattoo. But first, I'm the 62nd person to like this group. That's bloody cool. Oh, and the daughter doing Katie's voice is adorable. Thank you very much, Scott Sutton. And I know that I kind of peeked in a couple times to the conversation that you and Jeff were having on Facebook Messenger, and yep. it was great. And thank you so much for showing us your tattoo. That tattoo is cool. That is really, really awesome. We'll, we'll go ahead and, and, with his permission, we'll put that up on to our, uh, our uh, site. I asked him if it would be okay if we put it up on our social media, and he said yes. So, so we are going to put that right Blip, right there. Yes, and so we're going to go ahead and put that onto our website. So once again, go to our website and check that out. Also, we want to say again to our good friend Debbie in regards to episode nine, and this is her uh, quote to us, OMG, the outtakes, I laughed so hard, I snorted. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Debbie, we absolutely love you, and we are so glad that you've been enjoying what you've been listening to. Also, uh, like, snorts are great. What is laugh money for me is a spit take. <laughs> if I get some, if I get somebody to laugh when they're drinking and they do a spit take, it can turn out horribly. I've been spit on uh, more than once, and I was quasi happy about it due to not from just being spit on but just due to the fact that it's laugh money because it means that i said something that caught them so off guard and on that wonderful note jeff and rick present is a bi-weekly self-produced podcast recorded in front of a live studio audience of one cat in portland oregon if you would like to interact with us through the magic of the internet you can do so through twitter at jeff rick present our facebook page jeff and rick present our email address Jeff and Rick present all one word at gmail.com or at our website, Jeff and Rick And if you would like to help support our show, we're on Patreon. We're still trying to work on some bonus content for our backers, but if you'd like to throw us some money, it would be appreciated. You can find us at patreon.com Jeff and Rick present all one word. Please rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher. Tell your friends about us or share your love with us on our social media accounts. And as always, we want to thank the wonderful women in our lives. My wife, Cindy, and our daughter, Carrie. My fiance, Hillary, and our daughter, Aurora. We We love love you. you. Until next week. Costume. Wait, 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 wait. There was something else that I was supposed to tell you. Something important. What Uh, was it? uh, What? Did we forget to thank someone? A line you wanted to record? A parody song? No. What was it? What was it? No, no, no. What was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, next episode, we'll be interviewing June Brigman, co creator and artist of Power Pack. Costumes off! We're doing what? Our theme music is 80s Action. Also featured in this episode is Retro Future Clean and Ritual. All music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. To miss down and check on the qu- question. To check on the question. Mm. It's the question that haunts us. <laughs> And Jack continues his jerk streak by calling JD a witch nose and You sh- want to go ahead and just start that sentence all over? I do. <laughs> uh, well, no, I got better. Right. We'll just delete that and then we'll just <laughs> delete everything after that. This has been Jeff and Rick present. Who has the better Luke voice? There's something alive in here. There's something alive in here. Which one? You want to do it? Go for it. <coughs> there, I'm a sewer monster. Ruth! Ruth! Baby! Ruth! I gotta do the baby again. Ruth! Ruth! Baby! Ruth! (laughs) Yeah, I love kitchen. I love kitchens too. That's where food lives. Witch alerts cat licks of their siblings' position, and they. I'm pulling a Jeff. It's it's catching. (laughs)
a fawn. A fawn. A fawn. A fawn. A fawn. A fawn. Is a small deer. A fawn. A, a deer, deer. A female deer. Doe is something I don't have much of in my wallet. <laughs> also, it's the important part of donuts. Ray makes my donuts. Nuts. <laughs> he was also a Ghostbuster. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and, tapped out. <laughs> uh, uh, Moving on. Other stuff. Yeah, okay, some okay, words. What? Mm. I agree with her for wanting to help Alex. For I agree with her. I agree with her. I agree with her. I agree with her. I was... <laughs> I'll just take this moment to just cough and drink beer. Telling the alligator that... <clears throat> I have emphysema. <laughs> <clears throat> 